Hi guys, welcome back to the CS Classroom. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to integrate uh, CSS and uh, Bootstrap into our application. So how we can basically integrate um, individual CSS documents, and we can also import and use the Bootstrap library in Django. Now, if you don't know, Bootstrap is a collection of CSS and JavaScript files that make building user interfaces really, really easy. And rather than go ahead, go and try to teach HTML and CSS, which I'm sure has been done much better in a variety of other tutorials, uh, I'm going to focus on how to use this uh, unique and extremely useful uh, library in the context of Django to quickly build applications. So let's start with the CSS part. Um, already, so right now, I mean, see what CSS is going to help us do is kind of style this document. Um, this web, or rather this web page. We're not actually not going to do that much styling with the CSS we're going to write today, but I just want to show you how you can get going with it. Now we've already created index.css right here in our static slash guest folder, which we should have created in uh, a previous tutorial, but if you haven't, then create uh, the folder static. This is going to go in your guest uh, directory right here. So we have guest book, which is our top level directory. We have the guestbook folder inside of that for configuration. And then we have guests for all of our application code. So it's going to be inside this one, you're going to create a, a static folder. And then inside the static folder, you're going to create another guest folder in which you're going to create, create index.css. So basically in order to integrate that into this right here, into index.html, we're going to do a few things. So first we're going to create head which is generally where all our CSS will live, where we'll link our CSS documents to our HTML documents. And we're going to do load static. And this is basically gonna bring our assets, which is what they're called from our um, static folder into our HTML document. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to do um, link rel, which is what we do for any CSS documents, equals style sheet. Because rather than CSS documents, I should be calling them style sheets. Then we're going to have ref for the link. Uh, we're going to have our usual percentage signs. Uh, then we're going to have a static followed by guess and index.css. And that should link up our CSS document to our HTML file right here. Let me fix that typo right there. And what I want to do just to kind of test this out is I'm going to, well, actually right here, it seems like we've got some kind of error. Print a collection of metadata. Okay, so far this should be fine. We'll see if there are any errors later on. But anyways, we're gonna to go to our index.css. And what we wanna do is we want to turn this uh, right here, we're gonna turn this green. So this is gonna be h1. And what I mean by that is this hello world is wrapped in h1 tags because it is a header. So we can use this h1 tag in order to give it some style. Ah, this is what I was missing right here. Okay. Um, so we'll go to index.css, we'll type h1, and then we'll put some braces right there, and inside that we're going to put color, and then green, followed by a uh, semicolon. And now, hello world is green. Now there's a whole lot more I could do with CSS. Uh, for instance, I could organize this into a grid-like format, um, pretty much the sky's the limit as far as changing the appearance and layout of your web page. However, that's not really in the scope of this tutorial. Um, my main goal was to teach you how to be able to integrate the CSS into your Django application. Now that you know how to do that, you can go ahead and explore CSS on your own. So what we, what we want to do now is we actually want to go ahead and integrate uh, the Bootstrap library. So Bootstrap 5 is actually a series of, well, it's a package with CSS and JavaScript that allows us to basically uh, style and set up our web page 
in a way that is much more quick and easy to use than just with CSS and JavaScript. So in order to get started with that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our terminal. And that's going to be right here. Right now, it's actually running um, the server. So it's running the development server. And it's basically running our application. But I'm going to do Control C to get out of that. And now what I want to do is I actually want to do pip install. Actually, I'll, I'll zoom in on this a bit. I want to do pip install Django bootstrap v5. So you should have something like this. And then hit enter. And it's actually already installed, but I'm just hitting hitting enter just to just to kind of give you the idea. And now that we have that, we want to go to settings.py in our guestbook directory, the one for configuration. So we're going to go right here. And right here where it says installed apps, we should just be able to go ahead and put in bootstrap right here. So normally you'd have to just kind of copy or link the uh, bootstrap files, but here we have a way to directly integrate it into JavaScript. Rather, before we move on, I would actually like to just make one quick fix. So it's going to be bootstrap five, not just bootstrap. Anyways, moving on. So what we want to do now is we want to actually take uh, bootstrap files. So basically this library of UI elements and integrate them into uh, our HTML. So right here we, right here we have index.html. Um, before we do this, we're going to actually tackle another concept called templates. So templates allow us to split up our HTML or our front end into different components with higher level components and lower level components. So what we're going to do right here in our templates slash guest file is we're actually going to create a new file called base.html. Uh, actually, I actually need to drag this right here into guess. So it's actually in this directory. And the idea is that in index.html, we're going to be including base.html. So we're going to do something like this. And we're also going to, well, for now, this should be good enough. Um, and then also in our other file, guestlist.html, we're going to do the same thing. Now, the reason we're going to do this is so that we can actually include all the code from base.html into both guestlist.html and index.html. In, in, a, in a sense, both of these files will inherit any HTML or code from base.html. This includes any visual elements, any uh, style sheets, or any JavaScript that's been attached, or any other files. This is so that we can have a standardized set of code that different documents can use. And basically, we can reuse base.html in different documents instead of having to copy it. Also, if we want to edit um, some code that's common to all the different HTML documents, we can do that in base.html. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and look at what base.html is actually going to look like. So what I'm going to start out by doing is just creating an HTML document. And in this HTML document, I essentially want to put the header, so the list, and index.html to be able to share this CSS file. So we're going to go here. We're going to kind of create base.html as we would any other HTML document. We'll have that. We'll also have a body. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this out of here and put this in here in our head. And in our body, we're actually going to have h1 guestbook app. And we're going to remove any heading from index.html right here, because the idea is that now this will this uh, guestbook app will be displayed in both index.html and guestlist.html. By the way, if you don't remember what guestlist.html is, that was where we could actually see all of our. Um... Actually, I need to restart the server. Let me go ahead and do that. But that was where we could see a list of all guests. Cool. 
cool. We've got a couple in here for right now. And it looks like we've already got an error right there. So what we need to do is we need to go to index.html and add our percentage sign right here. Cool. Okay. And also right here in guestlist.html. So anyways, right here, we've added our static um, and we've added our guestbook app header, which is going to appear in all of our different documents. So we've got that right here. We'll go back to the main page. Now you can see nothing is showing up here. The reason for this is because we haven't made all the changes we need to yet. So right here in our body, we're going to have block content. And then we're going to have end block. And what this basically means is that any content from the chice content block right here. So all HTML documents will be this, or all web pages will be this, with whatever other content taken from the child HTML files loaded in this content block right here. Now, equally, in index.html, we're going to have to make a change to reflect that. So we're going to have to take all of our content and put that in block content. And then, okay, we'll need to do that. And we also don't need anything, any of these anymore because all of these are taken care of in our base.html. And basically index.html is just gonna fit in right here, having already having access to all of this other stuff. So we can get rid of that. And now we just have a block right here. We'll do the same thing in guest list.html. So right here, we can just get rid of that. And I don't think we really need, well, we'll keep this just to, just to make it clear what this is. We'll have that. Well, actually, we'll have to tab that again. But anyways, right here, we're going to have block content. And then end block. Then we'll go ahead and we're going to tab this like so. Let's go ahead and see what we've got now. So now you can see the content we had previously reappeared. And if we go to list, you can see the same thing. We see the content that we had before we made these changes. So now that we've kind of divided our front end or our web page, or basically our website, you could say, into multiple templates, we're going to go back to Bootstrap and add all of our Bootstrap assets. So we've got load static. We're also going to, we're just going to copy that real quick. We're going to have load um, bootstrap 5. 5 just being the version of bootstrap. It's been around for a while. We're going to have load bootstrap CSS. We're going to have load bootstrap JavaScript. And we're going to have, uh, well, actually right here, we don't need load for these. We just need Bootstrap CSS. Then we're going to have Bootstrap messages. We're actually also going to specify a title here, which is going to be guestbook. And this load Bootstrap 5, for whatever reason, also needs to be included in our templates. So we're going to put it up here, and we're going to put it in here. Not really sure why that is, but that's the way it works. So, so far so good. Let's go ahead and refresh and see what happened here. So right here, you can kind of see the style of everything changed, because it's taken on some of Bootstrap's uh, styling, like font, font mainly in this case, and some of the layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of, I'm going to go through how to use Bootstrap at a really, really low level. Um, as I said, similar to HTML and CSS, there are a lot of tutorials out there that can explain Bootstrap, Bootstrap in more depth and with more clarity than I can. Um, so this is just going to be a way to get you started at a low level using Bootstrap in your Django applications. Uh, Django being the emphasis here. So first off, what I want to do is I want to kind of style this in a way that maybe makes a bit more sense. This is just like kind of weird and 
looks ridiculous. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of our code right here, which is mainly the form, and I'm going to um, actually create a container. So I'm going to say div class container. And this basically add, acts as, as it says, a container for everything in our web page. And what this also does is all of our content in here, it's going to center it. Um, and it's going to provide some horizontal pad, uh, padding on either side. So it's basically going to make this all centered within uh, one block. The next thing we're going to do is we want to put all of this into a row. So we're going to say uh, div equals row. Right now we only have one row. We're basically putting our entire form in one row and one column. And let me just show you the next step and then I'll kind of explain why. So we've got div class equals row, um, div class equals column. So a medium column um, and of size 12 is basically taking up the entire container. So we're going to tab this again right here. And then we're going to close this off right here. OK, cool. So right here, we're basically basically have one row and one column of width 12, um, or rather of, of height 12. And we're putting the form inside there. So ordinarily, we'd have, we'd have um, multiple rows and one column for each of these form elements. But because this form was created in Django and auto-generated, we can't really do that in this case. In our next tutorial, where we integrate a JavaScript library as well, we're actually going to break this form up into its components, and we're not going to use form.py anymore, and uh, apply the row and column to those each individual elements. And you'll also get to see that when we get to guestlist.html. So let's just refresh this and see what this looks like. OK, looks a bit more organized here. Um, kind of looks like we're still missing something, though. So what we actually want to do is this is a form. And we want to organize it as such. So right here, we're going to add, um, we're going to change this a little bit. So we're going to say, we're going to say bootstrap. form, and then form. And this form is referring to the same form from before, which we saw in views.py right here. We're just adding some bootstrap styling to it. And we're also going to put this into a group of buttons to give it some styling that is, um, well, some styling according to bootstrap. So we'll say buttons. And buttons. Perfect. OK. Is there anything else we need there? Uh, we got that. OK, that should do for now. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And we've got something that looks a lot more presentable. Now, what I want to do, actually, is two other things. So what I'm going to do here is I want to create a button so that we can actually go to our guest list without actually just typing it in here and some instructions. So right up here, I'm going to say, I'm just going to have a paragraph. I'm going to say, uh, enter name, email, and message. And then click the submit button. And then I'm going to add a hyperlink. So I'm going to say A. I'm going to say href equals link. So similar to uh, what you put in right here for the form action. Then I'm going to say class equals button. And button primary. Followed by go to guest list. 
Let's go ahead and let me um, just actually just refresh this. And we've got a button here. It says go to guest list. And we can, well, I typed in link. I probably should have typed in list, actually. So we'll type in list. So basically what happened right here is we have a really nicely styled button that looks very different from our submit class. And class is basically applying, they're basically containers of, of CSS code. So we're basically applying a class called button and button primary to this element right here, this A element. Uh, we're giving, we're typing the text for the element for the button and then a link so that when we click on this, we're just going to go to list. Refresh this. All right, I should probably, sometimes this actually gets a bit, I need to save this right here, restart the server. Because sometimes when I'm editing HTML, it kind of gets hung up if I don't restart the server. I think it has something to do with caching. Okay, and now I can see all of the different um, guests that have been added to the list. Uh, I'm also going to apply the styling to this one right here, to our input. And I'm just going to say similarly. Cool. Okay. Now, I knew how to do that because if we go to the Bootstrap website, so it's... I knew how to do this because if we go to the Bootstrap website, we have all sorts of instructions on how to customize our layout. Um, so, got actually just CSS components, or CSS um, attributes. And also we've got some different components we can add and buttons is one of them. So we can create these different buttons. Uh, I created a primary button. What I could do as well is I could create a success button. So if I go back to my code and I type in right here, success. Mm, okay, I've got submit right there. I gotta type in class, I spelled that wrong. So right here, you can see a nicely styled bootstrap submit button. Okay, so now that we've done that, what I actually wanna do is I wanna to go to guestlist.html and I wanna show you how row and column can actually work instead of just using one row and column for this whole thing. And what I actually wanna do is similar to what we do with index.html, I'm gonna say uh, div class equals container. So creating one huge bootstrap container around all of the content on the page. Cool, we've got that. So we're gonna hit tab and now we wanna create, um, so right here we have individual guests. Um, remember we're, we're using a for loop in this template. We're gonna get rid of this. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna display uh, this in a column, this in a column, and then I want to display the message underneath. So just to kind of give you an idea, I'm just going to start typing some code. I'm also actually just going to create a header. I'm going to take this header and just put it right here so we can actually see it. We'll make that H2 so it's a bit smaller than the uh, app title. So right here, I'm going to create, I'm going to say div class equals row. So these are going to be in one row, and then I'm going to have the actual guest message in another row. So we're going to have two rows basically for each guest entry. And I'll say, I'm going to tab this right here. And I'll say guest.message. And this is just going to be in one big column because like probably it's going to be a longer message. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say div class equals col md12. Remember that's gonna take up the entire width of the page or of the container rather. We'll do end div or we'll close that out. And here what I wanna do is, I'm gonna have these take up, each of these take up half of the width. So I'm gonna say uh, div class equals col md6. And that's gonna to apply to one of these. Uh, 
And I'm gonna do the same thing for the next one. So in each in these rows, there are two columns, and in this row, there's just one column. Okay, cool. Um, and I think what I also wanna do is I wanna create labels for each of these just to make it a bit clearer. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the name. This is going to be the, let's go ahead and save that. And let's just refresh this. Okay, so we've got name Jeff, message Jeff, email address. Um, for a lot of these, actually, I just wrote the message as being the name. But let's go ahead and let's just test it out so we can actually see. So we'll say uh, a myth. This is my email address. And then, hello, it's a myth. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna submit this. And right here we have name, we have email address, which is a bit long for uh, half of the container. And then we have the message, hello, it's a myth. Application. Again, there are many, many tutorials online and Udemy classes and stuff like that that can give you a good grasp on how to use these in, uh, in more detail. Um, our next tutorial is gonna focus on how to integrate something called view.js. So we didn't really cover much JavaScript um, but in the next tutorial, we're basically going to restructure our application so that it resembles something called a single page application, which is kind of the more modern paradigm for application development. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, in seeing that video and you found value in this video, please like this video and then subscribe to my channel to see future videos on Django and just Python in general. Uh, also, feel free to join the Discord. Um, right now, there's not too much going on on there, but if you have any questions regarding any of my videos, you can go ahead and ask in the Discord and hopefully get an answer. Anyways, have a nice day.